are responsible to not pass on the suffering of aging to the next generation as an individual it can seem like an impossible task but together pero juntos ensemble we can wake up this world to a future without aging the coalition for radical life extension with your help we've done a lot but we can do a lot more. And so much more is needed. To make super longevity a, a reality, reality in, in our, our time. time. Welcome to our webinar. I think this is our second webinar. I'm Joe Bardeen. I'm the communications director for the Coalition for Radical Life Extension. And this is James Stroll. Director of the Coalition. So welcome all everyone. And so happy to have you with us this evening. Thank you for being on. We have a really uh, great program this evening. I'm very excited about it. Uh, this is going to be a lead in uh, to RadFest, which is coming up September 5th. And uh, I want to see you all there because we got to make a mark. We got to be there for each other. We got to let the world know that we got greater opportunities to stay alive than ever. So uh, I'm very stirred about this tonight. So I'm happy you're on here listening to us. Yeah, great to have everybody on. We got people from all over the country. I saw Mexico City, Buenos Tardes, <laughs> <laughs> or Noches. And uh, it's great to connect like this. Um, yeah, our, our topic that we're going to explore today is really personalized medicine and what the implication is for, for age reversal. Um, but we are uh, approaching RadFest, and um, I was getting some of that RadFest energy. Yeah, I can feel from it those, tonight. From those videos and, and uh, yeah. not sure about the dancing. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if those videos made us... <laughs> they, they, they could take my dancing off that screen, I think. <laughs> we need work on your dancing and register for RadFest. So, yeah, we want to make it really uh, easy for you to join us at RadFest. So we have a special $100 offer. This is for you guys right now. It's going to expire uh, on Saturday, so it's Wednesday night. So you got about uh, really about 48 hours here to take advantage of that. And um, so go ahead and, and uh, uh, do that. Registering. It's, so it's September, so it's not that far away. So registering a little bit early uh, helps us because we use your money to build the event. And um, it hey, helps. This is a great offer. This, yeah. this, is, this is as low as offer as will be offered. <laughs> this is a killer yeah. offer. Yeah, it's a killer offer. And, uh, you know, and it's because you know, we want to make everybody available to everyone that opportunity to come, yeah. no matter what's your financial position. Yeah. You know, and so... Uh, yeah, so this is take advantage of this offer. You you won't see this again this year. So and we're doing something we're doing something new at Radfest this year, which is uh, breakout labs. So um, you can 
we've got a lot of requests for for more in-depth information. Uh, people love our speaker list, and it's amazing. And and uh, all the guys that are, that are on with us today have spoken at Radfest, and they're 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 tops. They're excellent. Um, but uh, if you'll show the next slide, the um, people have asked for more in-depth uh, presentations. And so the first time ever we're doing breakout labs at RadFest on, on these six topics and personalized medicine. There's going to be a personalized medicine lab is one of the topics. Um, you'll see brain longevity, activism and community lab, inner game lab, very important, longevity lifestyle lab, and women's longevity lab, and meaning there's in the the first half of the day is going to be dedicated to these breakout labs where you're going to hear much more in-depth presentations so everybody many people have asked for in-depth presentations but you only want the in-depth presentations on the presentations that interest you right so it's impossible to do that all in the main room so we're doing these breakout labs so that you can really get um a much deeper level of information and also opportunity to interact with the presenters and ask more questions and get your questions answered. Yes, this is this is excellent because we've always strove to bring the most progressive information yeah. uh, at Radfest and, and we get you know fantastic feedback in this. But this is going to give people an opportunity to even go deeper. Yeah. And and to utilize these labs to be able to you know get more personalized information, like you said, yeah. to apply to their everyday lives. I mean, right. this is powerful. This this is about saving lives now. Right. And that, that's what Radfest is about. Saving lives and extending life in a way that is not just, you know, something that we're, no one's interested in living long in some decrepit state. We want to live with vitality and strength. And that's what this is about. Yeah. That's why it's so important to attend Radfest because you, you can't get this information just, you can get it online, but you can't get it, the depth of it online like you can in person. No. And to make that personal contact with these doctors and to interact and, and to begin to feel inspired by them and, and the rest of the participants is huge. You can't get that by just going online. And you'll get a, a, a deeper level of engagement, a deeper level of information, and you'll connect with people that are yeah. on the same mission as you. And um, yeah, it's time to get out of the loner, like the loner immortal, the loner, yeah. the loner yeah. immortal state. The, the, the outlier, the yeah. outlier that doesn't know how to get back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, he, he escaped the status quo, but he then he doesn't know where to go. Exactly. And so this is the place to go if you're an outlier. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's get there. Last year was so much joyful, it was so joyful. Yeah. And 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 fun and and so informative. Everyone went out of there transformed. Yeah, it's yeah. it is it's it's transformational, and you want to build your circle. You want to build your circle of people who are going to be there with you through the tough times. We're going through a tough time right now with yeah. Bernie. You yeah. know, um, she's, 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 Bernie's had breast cancer for 10 years, but it's, it's really tough right now with her. She would be here with us. And we're fortunate that uh, Dr. Gladden and Dr. Catanzaro are helping to treat her. And, and we know them through uh, uh, Radfest. And, and they actually know Bernie on a personal level because of that. And so there's that personal connection that we make at Radfest where then you know who you want to turn to. And, and, and that's vital. And it's just vital, honestly, it's just vital to have people in your life who want you to live. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of personal contact, that, that's what's so important to, to be able to make that because uh, Dr. Gladden actually contacted me and thank you, thank you, thank you, and said he wanted to help Bernie and had something that could help her. So he introduced that to us and then introduced Katzenzaro, Dr. Katzenzaro to us. And from there, wow, what a powerful combination we have. And yeah. uh, we're, we're very excited about it. Uh, and, and so is Bernie and, and very grateful. Yeah. So I want to say hi to Bernie. Bernie's watching online. Yeah, she's online. Yeah. We, um, and, 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 but, but we don't stop. Look, Bernie's going through a tough time and, and, and we're with her. And um, it's, taken, it's taken a lot. It's taken a lot to move her through this. But we're doing the webinar. We're doing RadFest. Listen, the revolution doesn't stop. We don't get defocused. Stay focused on your life. Good things happen in your life. Bad things happen in your life. But you need your life, right? Without your life, you got nothing. So, um, so, so. We, we can't let sickness and aging intimidate us. Right. Look, we see all kinds of things uh, all the time that we have to deal with. Uh, you know, we, we have to understand that there's nothing uh, I feel that we can't get through with help, uh, inspiration, and, and the right innovation. 
uh, and we're finding these every day now. Yeah. And so, you know, like uh, Bell, Bell Falloon says, with Life Decision Foundation, no one has to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because right today, even though we're all, we all, you know, there's more and more coming with these innovations to stay alive, what's exciting is that there's innovations today, and, and these guys today are going to tell you about them, some of them, yeah. that, that it will help you stay alive till the next one comes along, yeah. that will be what advances from there. Yeah. So, so it's exponentially moving faster and faster. Right. We're taking our stand. We do understand. We, if you know us, you know you know we're yeah. about life, we're about staying alive, and we're not accepting the limitations of aging. And we're taking our stand, and we're taking our stand with Bernie. And we 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 invite you, we invite you to take this stand with us because collectively we are exponentially more powerful. And this is real. It's real for us. It needs to be real for you. And and part of the way of making it real is showing up. So uh, take advantage of that offer. And, uh, and, and anyway, we just want to see you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? yeah. We just want to see you. Yeah. So, so yeah. Well, I was going to say, so on that note, um, like Joe said, th these are crucial times. Okay. Uh, you know, we see a world that is uh, in struggle, uh, uh, really intense in struggle. Of course, I, from my perspective, the world's always been in the struggle. All right. Uh, we have to create something new. And I think the responsibility falls upon those who have this inclination to do that. Uh, it's, it's honorable, it's noble to go for living and, and, and vast living, living without aging and death. It's a noble cause. Nothing, I don't think there's been anything else more noble, noble than that uh, ever in the history of humankind. Uh, I think that, look, some people, I'm gonna say this, some people, they, they're always worrying about you know, going to hell. And, and I, think, I think we were born into a hell. I think we are born in, when you uh, have such a great world to live in, and you're born with, with health, and then you deteriorate. To me, and if, and if you don't fall asleep in that, like most people do, and you're awake to it, that's hell. To see people you love deteriorate, to see people you care about, and then find yourself in, in that position too, that everybody does, that's hell. We need to change that dynamics, and we can do that. Uh, we, we need to wake up uh, in, in a way that we've never woke up before, and to realize that we can create a world that is without aging and death. We can create heaven here on earth. I've always said at a young age, why, why do we have to die to go to heaven? Why can't we create heaven here on earth? Well, now we're meeting people, and you're gonna hear some of them tonight, that actually have that same inspiration, that, that, that want to make this world a place where we can all thrive and, and feel the nourishment of our interactions together, expand on that, and, and, and move in a, in a new intelligence that brings about abundant life in each of us. So th this is what, we're, what, what my inspiration is, and, and like Joe said here earlier, uh, we don't stop. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, Bernie in some uh, really intense situations at this time, but, but her desire is to keep going, and we're right there with us, with, with her in that, and we have a lot of people that are really giving her in that. We have uh, working from all different ways to, to uh, help her uh, on her way, and excitingly enough, she's making progress, and, and we're, we're really thrilled about that. But this is the message that I want to tell everybody no matter what state you're in, no matter what you're going through, you can walk through that. We can walk through this valley of death and fear no evil. And, and I really be with each other and, and creating a new life here on the planet that we should be as human beings building each other's lives, not destroying it, not, not taking each other's lives. But there's this death program in every human being that has to be overcome. And, and this is what uh, I'm about. Uh, I'm about bringing about a new immortal lineage that's there already in the body, waking it up. And, and they're having a, uh, like a reborn experience, I'll say, that, that we all are innately immortal. We were meant to be immortal. And we are, it's, we are, it's very vital that we fulfill that, that innate desire in our bodies to live and quit ignoring it and, and settling for death. So, <laughs> yeah. so I'm already feeling this, the, yeah. the spirit, like you said, yeah, that's uh, of immortality in my own yeah. body here tonight. And uh, I'm excited to share this with yeah. you. I'm, I'm more excited even to share it with you at RADFEST. Uh, because there's going to be a, you know, at least a thousand or more of us there. Let's, let's bring all the people we can because the more people that show up, the more, f the more attention we get from uh, everything, from more support uh, from the media, from uh, individuals who, who uh, maybe were doubtful at first that this could even take place. Uh, it, it causes a, a dynamics of energy that people begin to recognize that something's really happening there. So it's one thing to have, you know, a thousand people in the room and we get 2,000, 5,000. We draw more and more attention. We get more and more support. And the world begins to believe that we can live, not die. That we can live and not have to die. And that's what, that's the, the, the whole paradigm we're moving to change in, in each other. 
to get rid of this death program, to help each other understand that this is the most noble thing we can do is end aging and death. But we have to move together. We, we need to rally. We need to cause, we need to come together in a big way. So I'm, ur I'm urging every single one of you to be there at RadFest, tell your friends, uh, then you know, maybe next year we'll do a march on DC together. I don't know, but we, we, we gotta be big. We gotta make a big imprint in this world together. So thank you for listening. Yeah, fantastic. And, and we need our spirit uh, yeah. stirred. Yeah, wow. We need our spirit spurred. You know, if, if you think there's a protocol that's going to replace your passion to live, there isn't. Okay? And we've got, we've got some great stuff, but it, it, it's going to take our spirit. It's going to take the strength of our spirit to get through some of this stuff. Believe me. Believe yeah, yeah. me, I'm living it every day <laughs> 100%, Bernadine. 100%. We are. And it create, that spirit creates a strength and resilience in our body that we need. Otherwise, this strength of that, uh, and I experienced this in my own self, that I didn't have the strength I really needed until I had this deeper experience in myself to really walk this super longevity road. And now I have it, and I'm so grateful for it, and I'm inviting all of you to join me in that. Yeah, so we're ministering to you a little bit here. Yeah, we're ministering to you. We're talking to you a little bit about the energy and what it really takes to rise above some of these situations because we're facing it right now. So uh, I want you to minister to other people. Yeah. yeah, people need the minister of a new of life, not death. They need to hear that they can make a difference in this world now. And so I'm inviting all of you to get on fire with your life with us. Super. So uh, we're going to move into uh, our featured speakers for today. So um, our subject is uh, personalized medicine and age reversal. And because many of us are sort of looking for these big uh, uh, breakthroughs and these special uh, 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 protocols that we're waiting to sort of get into trials and out of mouse models and into human trials. And, but meanwhile, there's a lot happening right now that we need to know about. So I want to yeah. introduce our first speaker. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Gladden is a distinguished authority in the field of longevity and preventive medicine. He's the founder and medical director of Gladden Longevity. Advanced Performance Center and Esteem Clinic. It's in Dallas, uh, dedicated to optimizing life energy, longevity, health, and performance. Please welcome Dr. Jeffrey Gladden. Hey guys, <clears throat> thanks so much. Um, I just wanna congratulate both of you. Um, you know, when you think about when RadFest started, um, I think you really generated the initial win that is now in all the sales, if you will, of people really believing that uh, we can make such a dent on aging. And um, I think you were really a big part of generating that wind and still are. So congratulations to you for the, the impact you've already had. And I know there's a desire for a much bigger impact, but it's happening. So great work on your part. <clears throat> I'm just going to, we only have a few minutes. So I was just going to walk you through a couple of things. Uh, we could talk for a long time, but um, at Gladden Longevity, <clears throat> this is a clinic that we have in Dallas. It's uh, about 7,500 square feet. Um, some of you have been there. <clears throat> and I just want to talk about longevity itself. So we're talking about longevity. We're talking about not dying. And when I think about this whole area of longevity, I'm drawn to the fact that there's a lot of abstraction around it. What does it actually mean? Does it mean that we're just going to be like we are for the rest of our lives or we're going to do stuff or what is it? And for me, I've, I've decided that really when I'm 100 years old, right, um, I want to have a 30-year-old body and a 300-year-old mind. And I think there's really a beautiful thing about taking great care of the body and actually keeping it young, because I really think we're able to do that. I'm going to show you a little bit of technology around that. But I think if we're going to be young for a long time, <clears throat> none of us are really interested to go back to being in our 20s, right? We want to basically take with us all the accumulated wisdom, experience, relationships, resources that we have. But beyond that, I think there's really a need for us to actually expand into the full expression of who we are as human beings, right? And that really involves a very spiritual path, a very relational path. And this is really my target, if you will. So when I talk about longevity, just know that I'm thinking about a 30-year-old body and a 300-year-old mind, and I feel like I'm on that pathway now. So <clears throat> I will also point out that aging is an exponential problem. It's not a linear problem. Even though we we experience that as a linear problem because we, you know, every year we have another birthday, we don't feel that much different, feels linear. But in actual fact, it's actually very exponential. We know that people age so much more 
in the later decades uh, of the current lifespan, if you will, than they do in the earlier decades. And if you're going to actually have a 30-year-old body when you're 100, you can't have a linear strategy. And there are many linear strategies out there, uh, biohacking, getting healthy, things like that. They're, they're very well intended, but they're, they're not comprehensive enough to really get at what's going on. And so in my world, what we've done is create what we believe to be an exponential strategy for an exponential opportunity. And it involves four different circles, this life energy circle, which is really the psycho spiritual circle. This is where we become our unencumbered selves and live into the full expression of who we are. Uh, the longevity circle, which is really focused on the drivers of aging, if you will. These are both hallmarks of aging and other factors as well, but the hallmarks of aging, which are both phenotypic expressions of aging, in other words, how aging presents itself, but also become drivers of aging at the same time. And then there's a health circle, all the different organ systems in the body need to be cared for. And then there's performance, which is uh, physical performance. So when I'm 100, I want to be fast, agile, strong, quick, balanced, with great cardiovascular endurance, great cardiovascular recovery, reserve, and flexibility. And if I'm going to do that when I'm 100, I need to do it today. So as you think about your own strategy for how you're going to um, live for a long time, I think the best thing to do is to think about living young for a lifetime. And you should really focus on making yourself as young as possible at every moment, at the same time, making your mind as expanded and wise and full of equanimity as you can. I think that combination becomes a winning combination. So <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about just a couple of technologies because we only have a couple of minutes. And the first is plasmapheresis. This is a technology where um, basically blood is taken out of a out of an individual. It's run through a machine. Um, the red blood cells are uh, separated from the plasma. The plasma is thrown away. <clears throat> and then saline and albumin can be added back as it's pumped back into the individual. Or we can use young plasma now as well. <clears throat> And it turns out that when the, the convoys at Berkeley did the um, parabiosis experiments with mice, they showed that old mice got young and young mice got old when they hooked their circulations together. And they did did follow-up studies showing that if they did plasmapheresis only on old mice, that they rebooted their, um, their stem cells across all the different kinds of tissues in the body. And so they started to believe that <clears throat> maybe you didn't need young plasma. Maybe all you needed was plasmapheresis. And so they started to go down that path. And I went out and I did six sessions uh, at, in California, brought the technology into our clinic, did plasmapheresis there. And then it became clear that while it was good, it wasn't good enough. And so we now are using young plasma in conjunction with this. So it's possible to use young plasma without plasmapheresis, but if you do plasmapheresis, you can get more young plasma into your system in one fell swoop. So the beauty of young plasma is that it's full of all kinds of uh, healthy uh, young factors, right? Many exosomes, higher levels of things like GDF-11 and other proteins that keep us young, clotho, et cetera. And you can see from data here um, that people that get young plasma, they actually decrease their rate of aging. I'm going to show you a couple of examples. This one, somebody reduced their rate of aging by 17% after 1.8 liters um, somebody additionally, a 67-year-old with Parkinson's after two and a half liters, an 18% reduction in the rate of aging. And then a 53-year-old female received two liters one week apart. And look at her rate of aging now, it's 0.66. So what this means is that for every year she's alive, she's only aging 0.66 years. So when you start to think about your own strategy for living young for a lifetime, you should entertain the idea of plasmapheresis, young plasma. And then you've all heard about <clears throat> stem cells, of course. And what's really important to understand about stem cells is that when you have stem cells and you put them into, no matter what their source, if you put them into old plasma, right, they don't function nearly as well as if they're operating in young plasma. So what we've learned in the rejuvenation process, it's very important to take out the old stuff, put in the young stuff, and then put in the stem cells and allow them to do their work. And coupling that with different peptides that we use, um, you can get remarkable results for people. So we we offer this in our clinic as a as a series of things that people can do, um, just to let you know. And it's I think it's in it, as you think about these technologies, yes, things are good as standalones, but they actually work much better 
when they're sequenced together in uh, the appropriate ways. The other thing I want to talk to you about tonight is something that's more immediately accessible to you. I'm talking about plasmapheresis, young plasma, which we could do in Texas um, and stem cells as a, as a sequence. Um, and <clears throat> to do something like that could be around, let's say, $15,000 to do that kind of work. But I want to show you something that's also very accessible. It just comes out of research done on dolphins. Uh, a marine biologist, uh, these dolphins basically were kept by the Navy SEALs. Um, they found that the Navy SEAL kept dolphins lived longer than the wild dolphins, probably because they didn't have predators. But they also found that within the population of Navy SEAL dolphins, that some of them lived significantly longer than others. And they did metabolomics to figure out why that might be. And they identified a fat uh, that was in higher concentration. It's a new essential fatty acid. It's called C15, carbon 15. And it does appear in dairy products. You can find it in meat and things like that. But these fish that had a, uh, a taste buds, if you will, that drove them to eat fish that were higher in C19 or C15 live significantly longer. So it's a, it's a saturated fatty acid. It's not a polyunsaturated fat like omega-3s. Um, but it's actually very healthy. And it's the first essential fatty acid to be discovered in over 90 years. <clears throat> and I just want to show you this. I could show you lots of data on this, but when you look at fatty 15, you can see that in terms of its benefits, in terms of activating AMPK, decreasing mTOR, um, activating PPAR gamma, many, many things that biochemically actually help us stay young, it actually had more impact than rapamycin which is fascinating. And we use rapamycin uh, all the time in our practice as well. Metformin, you've heard about as being a drug that can maybe be useful in longevity. Omega-3s, certainly these are helpful. It's been shown that smokers that have high levels of omega-3s have significantly decreased risk of cancer and, and COPD. And then acrobose is used basically to ferment sugars that you eat so you don't actually absorb the sugar. But I thought, found this fascinating to see that C15 is actually more powerful than any of these. And so I wanted to share that with you uh, because that's something, it's called Fatty 15. You can go online and order it um, and you could start taking it tomorrow. It's typically one pill, 100 milligrams. Um, and then <clears throat> it has many, many um, benefits. The last thing I'll show you is that we do have a podcast if you wanna hear more interesting things that we're discussing all the time. I'll just let you know it's out there, the Glad and Longevity Podcast at gladandlongevitypodcast.com. The book I wrote, 100 is the New 30, has been extremely well received. It's, it's, I'm told over and over again that it's very well written. It's understandable. It's about 450 pages. It's available on audio uh, and uh, you can listen to it that way, but it's, it's detailed and it gives you a great uh, information on how to live young for a lifetime. The subtitle is how playing the symphony of longevity will enable us to live young for a lifetime. And the final thing is that I'm getting ready to start a a Gladden Longevity Longevity Certification Program, where we'll be training other practitioners. So if there are practitioners listening to this, uh, we'll be pushing this out through the RADFEST uh, group, if you will, uh, network. And we'll be starting this this summer. Uh, and if you're interested to be involved with that, this is another opportunity to learn in great detail many of the things that we're thinking about and doing. There'll be many, many cutting edge things. The book will sort of be the template, but we'll go well beyond the book. So I just wanted to share those thoughts with you uh, in a few minutes and hope you find that helpful. Super. Wow. Thank wow, you. Right. Thank you. Which, um, yeah, the C15, uh, mm -hmm. I've <laughs> never heard of it. There's always something new. It's out doing right? rapamycin. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, people have questions wow. about rapamycin. There's all, the point is there's always something new. I really feel, I sort of feel sorry for people who think they know it all about longevity, because for one thing, that's a, that's a material impossibility, but there's also, if you just hang out in the right places, you, you'll always, there's, you'll always discover that there's yeah. more. Yeah. So continuously, yeah. Never, yeah. never ending. Thank never you. Never ending more. Thank you for that, Dr. Gladden. So I want to introduce our next speaker, Dr. John Catanzara. He's the vis visionary CEO and co-founder of Neo7 Bioscience pioneering breakthroughs at the intersection of AI and HI, which is human intelligence and bioscience. That's interesting. Is HI going to become a, a thing? His mastery spans multi-omic sequencing, peptide engineering, drug discovery, and 3D proteomic integration, positioning him as a leading figure in molecular bioscience. Please welcome Dr. John Catanzaro. 
Hey, everybody. Thank you. Uh, this is like really a great uh, opportunity, Jim and, and Joe. I wanted to say thank you to you both. I mean, Radfest was like a, uh, a real energizing experience. Um, uh, Jeff and I both were there and we, we just, uh, that the opportunity and being able to catch the energy, catch the spirit of the people and, and really, you know, the focus, I would say the focus was just so uh, well done all the way across the board because you had different representatives in different places in different expertise areas. And I think that, you know, it gave a, a nice full impact, you know, on the significance that could be made uh, in, you know, in longevity, lifespan, resilience, medicine, right? And I like to use the term resilience because but, you know, with resilience, I mean, every step of the way, we're talking about renewal, renewal, resilience. And Jeff kind of was talking about that with, uh, you know, uh, clearing out the plasma and getting stem cells excited in our body to re to regenerate. And and these things are, you know, these things are happening now. That's really the exciting thing is that we're not, this is not like a tomorrow experience. This is like a now experience, Right. And uh, at Neo7 Bioscience, which I've had privilege, uh, you know, starting this company in 2019, but I'll tell you what, I've learned so much uh, through the years, uh, you, you know, being in clinical practice for 25 years has given me a good understanding of how it really has to work in the individual. I mean, mouse studies, animal studies, preclinical studies, all of these different things. Yeah, we, we understand that testing has to happen, but you know what? The bottom line is it has to make an impact in the person. And every person is different. And I'll tell you what, um, it, we learned so much from the signaling of different type of disease patterns uh, and the complexities. And then when we started looking at, you know, uh, resilience and lifespan patterns, you get to see, and Jeff and I had the privilege of working together for the last three years and figuring out the core impact, core gene impacts on, you know, what genes would have the biggest impact on making a difference in, in, the, in the resilience engineering, right? And the bottom line is coming up with an output engineering that matches whatever you're doing in capturing the data of the person. So like for instance, a patient submit their blood and their urine or their tumor tissue. And then we figure out at Neo7 Bioscience through our uh, pipeline of what the interrogation is on that data, how it expresses what faulty codes are being demonstrated in the pathways that affect dynamic proteins from doing their job in the body. And then we want, we have a peptide engineering solution that hits those targets. And we're learning so much as we advance because with the more patient inputs that we have in data, the more robust our intelligence becomes. And we find that there are things that, you know, no human mind in, in its capacity would be able to grab every compartment of this. When you actually have great minds, and that's what you were talking about, Joe, on this, is the human intelligence is never going to be antiquated. Uh, don't don't worry about that because the thing is is that when you focus in on resilience, the human intelligence quotient is going to even get better. <laughs> Seriously, and and it will because of the fact that you know you're you're working on, on levels of expression that can impact a person's uh, you know uh, system function for uh, on many levels, improving their ability to to stay healthier. Uh, and vibrant and and live longer and live you know quality of we're not just talking about living longer we're talking about quality living right uh, and and you get to see all this now I don't have any slides to show you but I can just tell you that you know we've treated um, you know in my clinical practice we've treated thousands of patients when I was in practice for 25 years and then uh, you know when we developed the company now we're moving toward over 700 patients in combination of what we're doing right now. So we, we've actually are, it's an interesting because <clears throat> more and more doctors are coming in and they're seeing like, you know what, we really need to toggle those switches really more intelligently. And <clears throat> it's important to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, the foundational elements, because, because if you, if you don't understand the, the, the waypoints that, you know, of, of the body, right. You could do some wonderful things, but you might not be able to impact the body if you don't understand what's happening on the baseline signal. There might be some things that you do that you you know normally would actually make an impact, but you find there's points of resistance, 
And the way you actually overcome those points of resistance is you got to understand the framework of what's happening in the molecular system. And that's what Neo7 Bioscience does. Is we figure out that complex dynamic protein molecular interface that really affects daily real-time expressions in the body and staying healthy. And, uh, and, and we've been able to have the opportunity of growing that technology. And, you know, we, it's amazing because we've been putting new layers of the technology on and people have just been really uh, uh, experiencing some great uh, turnouts with regards to changing some very potential, supposed, you know, potential impossible situations, right? And it, we've had the opportunity of working with complex disease processes. You know, in some cases, it takes a little bit longer to get there because the body is a very intricate, and very intricate, amazing uh, unit, and and everything works together uh, to keep this balance of homeostasis, right? So, I mean, it's like we understand the importance of being able to have a hub strategy and then building your other strategies into it so that they accent. And and help to accelerate the the process of of uh, you know getting to a better uh, a longevity lifespan resilience. So anyway, that's what we do um, uh, at Neo Seven Bioscience. So it's a uh, definitely uh, changing the paradigm uh, from a personal you know very much an intricate uh, precision and personalized focus. Um, and we've been able to see the results of many many patients. Uh, and, and it's astounding to us, uh, you know, so we're keeping on, keeping on moving in, developing the technology even further. You know, people can learn more about us on, uh, uh, you know, neo7bioscience.com. And of course you guys know about us and, uh, you know, we're really excited to be part of what you're doing because it's really, it's an amazing opportunity. Wow, thank you Super. very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and in the Q and A section, we'll talk a little bit more, we'll get you to talk a little bit more about how you're using data in your uh, design of uh, presumably peptides and other things. Super, okay. And now we're going to hear from uh, Dr. Joseph Cleaver, is a fellow of the American Board of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. Boy, that's a real, that's a real acronym there. Uh, <laughs> in addition, Dr. Dr. Cleaver, the board certification, has board certification in internal medicine and he's board certified in anti-aging and regenerative medicine and has achieved certification by the ABAARM in advanced metabolic endocrinology specializing in bioidentical hormone therapy. Please welcome Dr. Joseph Cleaver. Hey, thank you so much for that. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll update that bio next time uh, I, I get on stage at RADFest. Uh, Jim, it's good to see you. I, I, I got to tell you first off, I haven't been face to face with you in a while. I don't want to know what you're doing because every time I see you now, you look younger and younger. So kudos <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Also, I, uh, that's you know, a total honesty. I, I mean, half my practice is um, aesthetics and I do a um, what's called a 4D facelift with stem cells. And uh, so I always focus on somebody's youthfulness in their face because that's a reflection of the, the real um, aging of their of all their cells in their body. So um, that said, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously privileged and, and honored to be affiliated and associated with RADFest for quite a few years now. And, uh, you, you know, you, it's kudos to you guys. You're, you're the stewards of, of longevity medicine. And I um, really uh, give you a lot of praise because this is a slippery slope sometimes. And when we get into longevity medicine and we're looking for the, um, the, a sound um, therapy that has promise, you vet these folks. You don't. They don't get on stage unless they actually have something real, and that's that's it's really important. That's why I'm very pleased and honored to be with you guys. So that said, you know, the, I've been at this for quite a long time um, uh, in longevity medicine. My my background, briefly. I know I have only a few short minutes. I want to give you some insight. Every time, every every periodically, I'll call up. I'll call up Jim and say, Hey, I got something in my tra trending in my database here over in Dallas. And you might be interested in, and my my practice has been around for 30 years, and I've been at practicing longevity medicine for about that same time. I started out in medical school in Rome, Italy, a very different medical education. Move, I was at Cooper Clinic and UT Southwestern here in Dallas for um, uh, for 14 years, and then moved into private practice. So, 
that culmination of understanding longevity and the, and the science of human aging um, is really the fore and the focus of my practice now. And um, the um, uh, the understanding of the new metrics of that, that come on um, recently in the last few years of understanding the biological markers of aging become a challenge for us. Uh, and, and when I sit in you know, my office with a patient that, that's really embracing their biohackers and they want to slow the aging, stop the aging process if they can, and even reverse it. I mean, I have proof now that, I, you know, just like Dr. Gladden, and kudos to both Dr. Gladden and Catanzaro, Kat phenomenal work they're doing. Um, um, all, all the praise in the world. That said, that those biological markers can be a conundrum. You know, we mentioned, oh, here's some epigenetic aging. Well, how, how young am I in my epigenetic age? What am I what is my DNA and methylation telling me? And then I look over and say, oh, my pace of aging doesn't sync with my epigenetic aging. You know, you can slow that pace of aging down, but why is somebody still going into renal insufficiency? And what's come to light, and Jim and I, we had this conversation a couple of days ago, um, and I've been speaking on this gene and protein for 10 years now. I'm coming out with a book. Uh, it'll be on Amazon next month, a little, little plug for it. Um, it's, uh, it's called the Clotho gene. And the Clotho gene has been around since 1997. It was discovered in a Japanese lab um, years ago, just serendipitously. And it turns out to be one of the most powerful biological markers of aging to date that I see in my practice and, and in my, uh, my uh, longevity program, my precision, my precision on longevity program. And what I see is exactly what I just described. We'll see somebody whose uh, you know, epigenetic age is 20 years younger and their telomeres are 10 years older, and then comes in uh, out of nowhere, Clotho gene is a very powerful, what's called pleiotrophic uh, driver of aging and deterioration of systems and organs in the body. So pay attention to it. Get online and start looking up this gene, K-L-O-T-H-O. It's extremely powerful. And what you'll see is, what I see is in my experience in my database is what's surprising, or not surprising, but enlightening to me is my oldest patients have the highest level of clotho protein in their body. This protein is it's produced in the kidney, it's produced in the brain, but the higher it is, the lower your risk of developing these, these deteriorating diseases of aging. So uh, how do we increase? We want to increase our clotho gene. We want to increase our clotho protein because it is an overriding driver of aging, in my opinion. I'll see everything else looking really good, but what's good, what, when, I, when I see a very low Clotho number, uh, there's a lot of risk there. And I don't treat cancer, but I will tell you, I, I'm, a, I, I'm, I'm a wingman. I, that's what I tell my patients. Somebody come in and say, hey, I got pancreatic cancer. I have three patients in my practice right now with cancer. We have them in remission. I just guide them into what's out there and what they can possibly embrace to, you know, to live long, to live to live longer and deal with this the, with this cancer. Every one of them. Here's the here's the um, here's the here's the ranges for Clotho. Above five is normal. If you thirty, this is Genfinity Labs, by the way. Doctor She and I work very closely on this, and I know Doctor Gladden knows Doctor She uh, Gin really well. But the Clotho gene, uh, uh, the higher the better. Those cancer patients that I, that I brought into my practice and inherited, they have non-existent Clotho. It's 0.1. We want to be 10 to 30. My oldest patient, over 90 years old, her, she has the highest Clotho gene in my database, uh, and the protein in her database, and she is 91. Her Clotho is 20, 25 to 27 every year. So there's something very powerful about this, about this gene about this protein that we can uh, that we can actually increase what the challenge is now i can rattle off 15 things in the literature that increase that clotho protein and it is linked intimately to certainly cancers all cancers across the board um i, mean, I don't want to rattle off on all these studies but the point is is every disease of aging is linked to low clotho so that's the message for this evening the other message is Okay, you can get online and go. Oh, should I do? Uh, I look up, look up a few things. Oh, cordyceps works. Uh, cordyceps sinensis, uh, astaxanthin, omega threes. What I found right now is the, uh, the the unique formula for each patient is choosing and selecting and trial and error a stack of various things that raise clotho, but most much as 
as important is lifestyle, especially stress. If you look at caregivers, for example, caregivers are the most stressed people on this planet. And guess what they have? They have the shortest telomeres and they have the lowest clotho. So we have to deal with lifestyle first. So first and foremost, I'm a lifestyle physician. Anyway, that's the message for this evening. I've lost track of time. Are we around? Yeah, we don't. <laughs> you don't know the time, and we don't know. But that, that, <laughs> but, but we're good. That's yeah. we're doing good. Great presentation. Thank you. Yeah, super. Thank you. So um, yeah, thank you for that. So so you've heard uh, from you know three uh, uh, innovators in the space, and we have time for some questions and some just uh, conversation here. One question is, can you guys just talk a little bit more about how you're using, how omics data can be used in clinical settings for, for uh, uh, anti-aging or age reversal? Well, I'll speak to that. Um, you know, John and I started a project uh, a couple of years ago now, maybe almost three years ago, to look at the transcriptomics and proteomics related to the hallmarks of aging. And we're about halfway through working that out to where we developed the ability to report on um, a number of the different hallmarks of aging, things like telomere attrition and oxidative stress and inflammation and mitochondrial function and mitophagy and autophagy and things like this, um, and predisposition for cancer, of course. Um, and John's technology, he has the ability to take those omics and look at the genes that are actually responsible in terms of uh, increasing inflammation, increasing risk of cancer, decreasing autophagy or mitophagy, and then creating peptides that can go in and modulate gene expression and actually upregulate. Um, and so we've been using it in that sense in the longevity space. And then also John we work with John and he can speak to this better than I can, but they do a lot of transcriptomics and proteomics in cancer to actually understand cancer cells and then develop specialized peptides to make it difficult for the cancer cells to divide. And that's something that, that we've incorporated into our practice along with other supportive technologies, let's say. Um, so it's, it's, readily, it's readily used. Um, it's not just pie in the sky. Yeah, yeah. Super, John, do you wanna to speak to that? Uh, yes. Um... And the, the thing about that is, is that when you're looking at these proteins, specifically like clotho, for instance, um, a clotho, what we have found in our expressions that, as you know, clotho is uh, very abundant in the kidneys, the lungs, the brain, uh, and, and tissue regulation is a very important part of this. So what we find is, is that we take a portion of the clotho uh, protein fragment and, and we develop that fragment in what we call a cell scaffolding so that we can, and, and we make it into an injectable and that injectable will potentiate the clotho activity. So it, it, what it does is it actually boosts, it boosts the RNA expression of clotho. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting point because the genetics on clotho are also very interesting. I'm sure Joe could talk about this in great detail. Um, but, you know, you get one, you get half of a gene from mom, another half from dad, right? Those are two alleles that come together to make a gene. And sometimes we think about genes, if you get a bad allele from both parents, that would be the worst situation. Um, if you get a good allele from both parents, that would be the best situation. But with clotho, it turns out that is if you get a bad one from one parent and a good one from the other, that's actually the best situation. So if you're heterozygous for clotho, you actually end up making the most clotho. Um, and that's pretty interesting in and of itself. And now we're actually doing a study uh, that started last week that'll be over in 30 days to see if we can raise clotho with a new form of resveratrol called Piceid resveratrol uh, that comes from these um, bioreactors in Israel where they're growing these grapes under significant stress to actually really increase the polyphenol content and the and the potency of the resveratrol. So resveratrol is known to be able to increase clotho along with aerobic exercise and lifestyle things and many other things that Joe knows about for sure. Um, but we're, we'll be curious to see if this is an opportunity with something fairly simple to see if we can actually impact it. So, Joe, were you going to comment on that? Yeah. Um... Coming, uh, you know, approaching it from a, a, just a, a different uh, uh, therapeutic uh, angle, if you will, is we, we are in development of actually um, utilizing a, um, actually manufacturing clotho and 
uh, placing it inside a what's called a uh, well, I can't mention that name right now, but it's a it's basically a, a, a biolipid uh, sphere that delivers um, what's in that sphere through the gut in through the bloodstream and make it very bio biosoluble to the cell wall and then yeah. deliver clotho to actually the cell. Um, there's a couple of biotech companies out there that are trying to make clotho. Uh, I, I haven't seen a lot of uh, benefit from it so far, but we're, we're, we're doing a different approach. Certainly the, 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 um, if we can um, inherently improve the production of clotho in patients, uh, yeah, that, that, that's great. I haven't seen that yet, but I think a combination of, of both, if we could put that into an anti-aging uh, uh, pill, if you will, capsule, and take a clotho dose every day, um that's that's the that's the that's the avenue we're taking right now and we should have something by late summer uh, as a product out there okay great, Inter great. interesting to hear about that from the different angles so we have a question from uh the great scientist dr greg fay is with us hi greg hey greg 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 wants to know how can you use peptides without running afoul of the fda yeah, you put them on there you put yeah. them on there be a true trial so we have, yes. a, we have a trial for peptides uh, that's being submitted to the IRB. It's called a peptide safety trial. When you read through the FDA's criticism of peptides, it had to do with uh, they weren't uniformly safe. And yet we know that peptides relative to drugs are yeah. very, very safe, right? So we decided to do a peptide safety trial. So we have access to all the peptides. And then with John, we've actually... Uh, John went in and took a lot of peptides that we were interested to augment and augmented those peptides, and those will also be in the trial. Um, there, and so anyway, that's how we're going to go about it. Is basically put it in an IRB approved trial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's an interesting objection when you think about <laughs> about the idea of chemotherapy and universally safe. You know, don't really go together very well. Right. Um, how does one find out what type of peptide can help anti-aging and telomere lengthening, I suppose, is a question. We seem to be on peptides for a minute. Yeah, there's been talk about epithalon as a, as a uh, telomere lengthening peptide. Um, I think the data on it is fairly sketchy. Um, I'm not sure that we have off-the-shelf peptides that I've seen that actually really impact telomere lengthening. Um, we've seen uh, the ability to increase telomerase in the cell, either with agents like uh, TA65 or TAM818 or isogenous. And we've also had access in the past to a yogurt that actually could deliver telomerase into a cell and re-lengthen telomeres. And it turned out. Oh, no, might have lost him. He froze there. Yeah, he looks like he's frozen up. Yeah, he's frozen. Well, probably a better metric of aging throughout my. Uh, I was just okay. We lost. We lost you for a minute. Can you hear me now. I hear you. Yeah. Here, let me off my camera. That that beach is interrupting. I think so. I okay, think. Can you hear me? Now? Okay. I think. Where, where did I cut off? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You said epitalon is sketchy. Where did I, where did it cut off? Where did it cut off? Epitalon is sketchy right now, and you're. You were going on the other path there to, to show some other ways. Yeah. So anyway, there there are other ways to um, to re, to lengthen telomeres with agents that will turn on telomerase, the enzyme that relengthens them, TA65, TAM818, isogenous, and then we've had access to a yogurt in the past that could deliver <laughs> telomerase to a cell. Um, but as I was saying, t telomere length is more important kind of in midlife when you get to being, let's say, over 80. There are altern alternative ways to lengthen telomeres and alternative ways to shorten telomeres. So it's not just dependent on telomerase. And so epigenetic aging becomes a more direct correlate to biological and chronological age later in life than telomere length does. So it's important to understand that as well. That being said, you don't want to have short telomeres, but just to put it in perspective. So. Yeah, I think you got to start early and, and, and preserve that telomere length earlier in life, you're, the better off you are. Yeah. But, and, but it's, yeah. Never too late. it's never too late. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree with that. And the other thing to realize is that people, just like we all have different heights, people are born with different telomere lengths. Some people have shorter telomeres, some have longer to begin with. So just realize that. 
Okay, good. What is the best uh, way to use genomic information for longevity? So a lot of us know we can get our genome read. The question is like sort of, if we're talking about omics and genomics, well, where, what, what do we do then? You know, what's, what's, what's the next step once you've got that? Well, you I know, um, simply, ahead, yeah, I think, and I'll have Jeff uh, kind of piggyback on that, but the, simply if you're doing omics without any type of solution movement, like in other words, if you're just trying to find variants and variant expressions and something comes up positive, but it's clinically insignificant and all of this other things, these other things that we're all familiar with when we get these tests back, like uh, you got maybe 150 variants and they're not sure exactly how to place those variants. And, and they're, they're not really sure if whether or not they apply to you specifically. And there's certainly in a lot of cases, not enough uh, emphasis on, okay, so what do you do about this finding? You know, what, now that we find it, what do we do about it? So the whole purpose of discovering, you know, on the omics and proteomics and transcriptomics is that you just can't take the exome by itself and do a, and do a prediction and, and try to come up with some great, you know, uh, I would say uh, process. You have, to, you have to look at the total omics. You have to look at the exome, the transcriptome, the proteome, and you have to look at the person's own phenotype expression, the immunophenotype because these are the things that actually help to know how to categorize what's going on in the system, how these targets really relate and how you can, and what you can do about them specifically precision from a precision based point of view. And even from a personalized point of view, you can get a whole lot more specific if you know that you've got some kind of solution that you're putting to the genomics, right? Yeah. 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 I think that's a good point. Uh, there are, genes that are associated with longevity, and those are re those can be reported out now through New Amsterdam genetics. Um, I think what's what's most important with genetics, just looking at genetics and genomics, is to actually understand what cards you're holding. So if you have some genes, let's say you have the best configuration for Clotho, and you have the best configuration for IGF-1, and the best receptors, and the best configuration for this, that, and the other thing, um, then what you can do is you can leverage those things, right? You can try to boost Clotho more, or if you're really handicapped in a particular area, then you can go after that too. But I think understanding the cards you're holding gives you some insight into how to play the game. For example, people with APOE4, they live uh, on average a year and a half to two years shorter than people with APOE3. And they live about a year and a half to two years shorter than APOE2. So if you have APOE4, there are things we know that can that can basically mitigate the effects of APOE4 in the body, and if you do those things, uh, you know our working hypothesis is that we're we're improving longevity that way potentially for the person. So yeah. Okay, super. Um, what are the challenges of analyzing large omics data sets or what's what's happening with the data? Is that is that like an AI thing? Is that where AI is is opening up the the uh, opportunities? Yes. And the, the thing about the, you know, the big bio data world, I mean, it is huge. So the, the amount of bits of bio data that come in from, you know, person from a single, you know, sampling of a of an individual is so vast and you have to know how to algorithmically, you know, I mean, the, the AI in part portion of it is that algorithmic relationships that have different rankings to them to be able to understand. So like when Jeff was talking about the aging hallmarks, we actually have a ranking on the platform that, that puts it into the aging hallmark and then, and it puts, and it puts it into the interrogation path and how it relates. So for instance, one aging hallmark that we work with, is inflammation and oxidative stress. And there are core gene sets behind that, that that operate that whole process, right? But you actually have to go through all of the patient's bio data expression to understand how that, where that placement is in the prediction. So you can't just like, you know, it's not just about pulling up, pulling something out and just trying to describe it. It's actually, how does it relate to the total system expression, right? Gotcha. I love that. I don't know. Does that make sense? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> can, somebody, can somebody actually say it's simpler? <laughs> I don't, you know. Could you put that in writing, John? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you understand that. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like the you, you it's it's like this. It, you can't. You have to take the whole expression, and then you have to know how it's how the the precision parts of that expression relate to the system functions of of the of the body, right? And it's really important to know that because it's not just about understanding. Okay, these are the genes, and this is what the variant says. But how does it work? You know, to support the functionality of the of the protein expressions as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think there's a level of complexity that it's like um, we don't want it to be that complex, but it is that complex. It is. It is right? that complex. Well, yeah, okay. you know, we want the three things we should do for our longevity kind of thing. Right. But I, and I think that's where a lot of the frustration is because people aren't seeing those three like magic bullets that they can take. But if we open up to the potential of of all these metrics of the depth of where these metrics can take us it's actually very exciting but i think it's a little bit harder for people for us to get our minds around yeah that's a good way of describing it because it is a it is a very complex you know counterintuitive process process right so it does involve a lot of counterintuitive engineering uh and and you can't you know you can't just be thinking of it from the standpoint of a linear expression as jeff was saying earlier it is really multiple algorithmic expressions and 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 piecing yep. those relationships together you know what i mean so yep. you can't you can when you talk about genes proteins and signaling you can never put it in a linear relationship i think i think it's important for everybody to understand that biology is really very a very complex system and it's kind of like a rainforest is the analogy I use, right? Where you have life growing on top of life, on top of life, on top of life, on top of life, if you've ever been in a rainforest. And, and it's a very complex ecosystem. And to just try to push that ecosystem into one thing, where we're gonna optimize this, this thing, we're gonna make everybody keto, or we're gonna make everybody this, or we're gonna do that. Um, those complex systems really have a way of finding themselves back to equilibrium and they like balance. And they like to cycle through different states. They like to be fed. They like to be fasted. They like to have higher this, lower that. They want hormones now, but they don't want hormones then. And so working out the way to actually massage this very complex ecosystem back into a useful expression is really the goal. And the omics are a piece of that. But to John's point, uh, it's not easy and it's not simple. But just so you guys can wrap your arms around it, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make the rainforest youthful and grow that way and it's and it's complex so that that's just the way it is yeah understood yeah yeah super yes any other last words from our from our panel okay well i want to uh thank you guys so much and thank everybody for joining great job we're going to send thank you yeah we're going to send all the participants an email where you can take advantage of that hundred dollar off Registration for Radfest it's September 5th through the 8th in Anaheim. You need you need the information and the energy. That's right. And we that's would right. like to have your money so that we can build this event. Yeah. Hey, let's let's all help each other build build this new world. Like I've been saying from the start, and uh, take advantage of this offer. But uh, I want to tell you, look, I'm going to Joe is uh, all of us here that are on this panel like these guys who have come to Radfest many times, uh, they're doing, they're, they're all out. I'm asking all of you, I'm putting out a call to all of you to, you know, let's go all out for, the, for this new life. Let's go all out and supporting each other, showing up for this life. Look, there's all kinds of events going out there, but there's nothing like Radfest. So pick out ones you like, but don't leave Radfest out of it. Okay, there's nothing like Radfest. We're, we're the only ones really in this level dedicated to actual age reversal. Okay, from that, from that depth. And so that, that was started in the very beginning in 2016. So, so if you have any inclination at all of really having a quality uh, unlimited life, then I'm putting out a call to you to show up for your life, okay? Yeah. Show up and let's make a big impact in this world together. Uh, I need your help. I'm putting out a call to you. So thank you very much for being present tonight. Thanks everybody. All right, bless have a great night. Thank, thank you. you.